respiration rate's going to increase. Cardiovascular rate's going to increase. My heart rate's going to increase. I'm going to sweat because the blood pressure and the heat getting pushed out. Okay. What happens to your digestive system? It slows down. Slows down. Muscles, burn proteins. No. Oh, no, no. The last thing we want our body to do is use proteins as energy. That's bad. That's real bad. What do we want it to use as energy? Glucose. We want them using, we want it using them little glucoses. <laughs> and stored in the fat cells and keep all the fat there. Okay. So definitely want to use them little glucoses. All right. Then I want it to use what? The fats. Take them little glucoses and them little fat cells and suck them back out. All right. I don't want it using protein. Why? Because the first place it'll pull proteins from is muscle. Once you break it down, it does not build back up. So the last thing you want to do is let it pull from the proteins. Does that make sense? We'll talk more about that. But you, you want the body to get energy from sugars first, fat second, never from proteins. But our body adjusts because if we have a blood pressure at rest, well, if we're exercising, if we're starting to breathe in, if we're starting the heart rate, if we're doing all this stuff that would stand to reason, blood pressure is going to go up while I'm exercising. But that's okay. My body adjusted after I exercised, started cooling down, drinking my water, not sweating as much, blah, blah, blah. My blood pressure goes back to being... 110 over 70, whatever the case might be, okay? The goal is making sure it returns back to the set point. That's our goal. Positive feedback. Not in any way, oh, I shouldn't say that. I can think of two situations right off the top of my head that positive feedback is beneficial and one of those two can still kill you if you don't stop the cycle so technically that's not a good way all right the only way that I can think of as positive feedback being good is positive feedback that lets us give birth okay where negative feedback brings a situation back to the norm, positive feedback feeds the cycle. It does not come back to the norm. But isn't the inflammatory cycle positive feedback? To, a, to an extent. It will let you know that something's wrong, that healing needs to occur, but if it continues too long, it actually becomes a process that's going to break down, like a lot of things with your immune system, because it, it just can't keep fighting the inflammation. Now, what they're finding is we have inflammation all the time, all the time. It's just that, you know, it's not as pronounced in some people as it is others. Now, what they're learning about the inflammation process is that it leads to chronic diseases. And the chronic diseases can be pretty bad. So we do want to have something that breaks that cycle. And that's what we do with the positive feedback. Okay, like I said, the one time that positive feedback is very beneficial is childbirth. 
But even though positive feedback can be beneficial in the case of a hemorrhage, like, I don't know, bad accident, you know, something along the lines where you've got a huge gaping hole or whatever in your body, okay, we have to make sure that that process stops. Now, in the beginning, when the, you know, like when something terrible first happens, the positive feedback that gets created is important. But if you don't break the cycle, it will become deadly. So even though it sounds beneficial, it can still be deadly. In the case of childbirth, from the moment egg and sperm meet and mitosis starts, one cell becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight, that your body views this as a foreign object. And for that entire time, it wants to get rid of it, all right? It's up to the body's defenses in the mother for it to remain, okay? Now, when it's finally time, you know, with childbirth, well, you know, anybody in here got kids? Okay. Don't. We go through that childbirth process, right? All right? And you know how it is. You're going along and you're kind of like, oh, that was interesting. You know, and here you are, you know, waddling and carrying on and everything. And then you're like, oh, okay, that just was a little twitch or whatever. You keep going, you keep going, and all of a sudden, oh, that was a little more interesting. To the point that you get where they, you know, they love to show it in the movies and stuff like that, where the woman's screaming, you know, jumping the man up and up and and saying all these things and everything. Yeah. Okay. And you get to go, stick the baby out. All right. And then it still continues because you got to get rid of the afterbirth. Okay. But that's positive. Body's like, I got rid of that foreign object. <laughs> Thank goodness. And then you're good. Well, so, just say, y'all know what I mean. Okay. So, positive. Yeah. Other than that, we want to bring it back to the north to set point. So those are. This is one huge topic that you're gonna to need to carry with you for every piece. Of the course. Actually, from this point forward, depending on what you choose to do, homeostasis. Now, the other part about chapter one, terminology. Yes, it is important. Most definitely. Spelling. Yes. Most definitely. Important. Do you get a word bank? No. Okay? So, you need to make sure that you're paying close attention to the words, the spellings, how the endings might change on a word, that sort of thing. But the more you use the terms the easier it gets. The other part about this, what is the body plan? Blueprints would be a plan of my home, right? We have the same thing for our bodies. It becomes extremely important to know our anatomical position. What do you notice? Because over here in the picture, 
She is in anatomical position. What just happened? Is this how you walk around? All right, is that, is that how you do things? Uh-uh. What's the one difference? The palms are facing The palms are facing upward. Okay? So, when you begin to, like in clinicals, writing, report, you know, writing on the charts and stuff like that, this is one of the things you're going to have to remember. You're going to have to remember anatomical position. And then you're going to have to remember what you're writing, what you're talking about in relationship to anatomical position. Okay, so if we're like this for anatomical position, we're going to have we're going to have things above, we're going to have things below, we're going to have things to the front, we're going to have things to the back, we're going to have deep, we're going to have. Do you see what I'm trying to get to? Okay, so these are terms that you're going to be expected to know and be able to use. Because it is telling someone else. What do I mean by that? You tell them what the location is. Who am I telling? Maybe a doctor or somebody else. Everybody that's going to have to come into contact. Mm -hmm. It could be a doctor who might read that chart. It might be the nurse on the next rotation. Whatever the case might be. If you've got something wrong, I mean, okay, for example, when I had surgery on my knee, they come in, they look at you. What are you here for today? Okay, I'm here for a right medial. And you know, they're thinking, what? And I go, teach anatomy and physiology, and I put my foot up like that, and I go, and I took my own Sharpie and drew it. <laughs> and I'm like, don't, don't you go touching this knee up here. I wrote on this side, do not touch. <laughs> huh? My, when all my surgeries, the surgeon would come in and sign, the PA would come sign, and like yes. somebody else would come sign. They would come in, you had to initial, the doctor initialed, so they would know they were cutting on the right leg. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, do not touch over here, because there ain't no way I was going through it again, okay? Because if you put something wrong, that's what could happen, okay? I don't know about y'all, all right? But like I mentioned on Tuesday, when I wake up on that gurney, and it's going to happen, I know what it is. Now, depending on whether one, you know, the nurses or whatever is one of my students, they might look at it and go, oh, no, you don't want to wake her up. Let's just push her in the hallway <laughs> and let's leave her for the next shift. You know, let's not wake her up. Let them handle it, you know. But I'm hoping whoever wakes me up or if I wake up or whatever and whoever's standing over me, they're going to at least know left from right, anterior, posterior, superior, inferior, whatever the case might be. So the terminology gets very important. Anatomical position, something definitely get familiar with. When the body lying face up, you'll hear this term right here, supine. The patient is supine. The patient is prone. Okay, they're going to expect you to know what those terms are. Okay, any of you in here do like... Um, EMT or anything like that. Okay, you I'm use a paramedic, and my um, and my reports are we found the patient lying supine. We found the patient lying. Prime. Thank you. It is used. So these are terms I want you to start getting used to. But take a break. Be back at three thirty. <laughs>